Hey folks, welcome to this video. Before we dive in, we'd just like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, LivePeer, who are the makers of Daydream.live. Daydream is an awesome platform for exploring generative AI tools, especially when it comes to using Stream Diffusion and Touch Designer. You can use Daydream.live as a fun exploratory web tool to get into kind of gen AI content making, but also LivePeer and Daydream have been working with members of the community, especially .simulate to add the ability inside of .simulate Stream Diffusion component to actually be able to use Daydream's hosted cloud version of Stream Diffusion inside a Touch Designer. What that means is that if you're using a MacBook or a non-NVIDIA GPU, or maybe you just don't have big, beefy, expensive hardware that you can run all these kind of Stream Diffusion tests locally, this gives you the option to kind of use somebody else's server, stream that data out of Touch Designer through the web to that server, get the results back, without any expensive hardware on your side. So I think this is an awesome opportunity for folks who have been wanting to experiment with Touch Designer and Stream Diffusion, but maybe don't have the resources locally to do that. This is a really good option for you. So enjoy this video as we also take you behind the scenes a little bit of how control nets work and how you can use multiple control nets to really dial in the content that you're making with your Gen AI tools like Stream Diffusion. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Andrew here with Immersive HQ, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this super simple meta ball 3D render. And we're going to be using this to pipe that into Stream Diffusion TD. Now, this is a Daydream collaboration, and with Daydream, there is a server hosted Stream Diffusion TD service, uh, which includes multi control net. So the goal of this video is to teach you guys a little bit about how control nets work and um, what they can actually do to enhance your stream diffusion output um, and why, you know, someone might prefer multi control nets versus a singular control net. So to start, what we're going to need is we're going to need a noise chop. And with this noise chop, we're going to change the seed to be me dot digits like so. Um, and that will just reference the noise, the node number. And then we're going to change a period of five and we're going to make the amplitude 0 0.5 and we're going to make the offset also 0 0.5. So and then from the channels tab, we're going to change it to be X, Y, and Z. So that we have three different um, channels. And then in our common tab, we're going to turn on time slice, just like so. Now I'm going to grab a null. And with this null, I'm just going to call this POS1, like for, for position. And yeah, from there, what we can do is we can grab a meta ball uh, top. And with this meta ball stop, what we're going to do is we're going to actually drag our um, X coordinate onto our center, like so. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into this um, code right here, and we're going to change it so that it's just POS plus string me.digits, like so. And that shouldn't change anything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy all of that. We're gonna do it here and do it here. But for these ones, we want it to be Y, and we also want this one to be Z, just like so. Now for our radius, I'm going to change it to be 0 0.2, just a bit smaller. And yeah, there you go. Now what we can do is we can copy this, um, and we can do this, I don't know, let's just say like six times. Uh, four, five, six, and I'm going to make the third one 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and I'm going to make the weight of it five. So now what we can do is we can actually grab a merge. And with this merge, we can actually bring these all in together. Like so. And yeah, once we do that, you'll see that we have our meta ball. 
So I'm going to grab a no, like so. I'm going to render this out with just our standard render network. So we're going to grab a geometry, then we're going to grab a camera. We're also going to grab a light. We're also going to grab a fong material. Like so. And then we're also going to grab a render. And this render top, we're going to make it square. So it's going to be 1080 by 1080. And yeah, we're also going to give this um, metal ball a four. So I'm also going to add a rectangle. And this rectangle we can do as a ZX plane. Then we're going to make the size Let's do five by five. And we're going to add another null, like so. And we're going to grab a geo again. And this one, we can grab another Fong material, like so. And yeah, I'm going to make this diffuse. Let's just do like blue. Right now. OK. And so now what we can do is we can play around with the camera. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, we're going to do it null. We're going to, I'm going to right click and view it. Like so. And I'm just going to keep it down here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Around here. Okay. Um, and yeah, we can play around with our camera. We also probably want to play around with our light. Um, and then with our light, actually, we want to make it cast some shadows. So I'm going to go into our shadow type and make that soft 2D. And then this is up to you, but I'm going to do a shadow resolution of four times the default. And we're going to change the filter and the sample, sorry, the filter and the search step to the maximum. And yeah, now we can like, zoom in. The, like the, there we go. Okay, and there we have it. We have our little middle ball scene that we can plug into Stream Diffusion. So, as of recording this video, the most recent Stream Diffusion update has been 0 0.2.99, I believe. And this version allows you to go into the install and change the backend. You can either choose local or daydream. If you choose daydream, it will use the daydream servers as the backend and the stream diffusion will be still pretty much the same. You'll have the same prompt block where you can type in your prompt. Mine is prismatic bubbles, dewy, floating above pond, drop shadow. Um, then you have the same old step schedule that you can add and remove your own step blocks. I'm just going to keep it at one. Um, and yeah, the seeds, the guidance scale, all that's pretty much the same. Now, the only thing that's different is the control nets. And so in Daydream, all of the control nets are being pre-processed -pre on the server. So you don't actually need to do any of that. And What's even great is that you can add and remove how many you like. Daydream offers four, which are HED, Depth, Canny, and Open Pose. Um, now, if you are on the Daydream model, um, what that means is that this second input that you usually will put in a uh, control net is basically like it, it has no use. And so, yeah. Let's just get this started and you will be able to see what I'm talking about. And there we go. We have our output right here. Like so. And you know what? I'm going to split the pane and I'm going to make this a one of those top viewers. Like so. And we're also just going to disable. Oops. Here we go. And disable the backdrop tops like so. And there we have it. We have our input and our output side by side. Um, like so. Now, um, 
let's see. One thing that I want to change is I'm going to make this rectangle a bit smaller. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm going to move the camera a bit over. Okay, great. And so, um, yeah, if you see, you know, this is going to be a video on control nets. And so what my purpose is, is to just try to explain to you guys what each one of those control nets does. So you can think of uh, control nets as a way to help Stream Diffusion's output based off of your input characteristic. And so what I mean by that is if I turn down all of these control nets, you'll see that the output almost has, well, it has zero adherence to um, our input. And that's because there's basically no help going on, right? Now, let's say that we were to increase canny. Well, what is that actually doing? Well, if you go onto this website called huggingface.co and you go into like this uh, control net table, you'll see that um, there actually is one for canny. And you'll see that what's happening is control net image is it's grabbing all of the edges of your input, um, all of the small details of your edges. So in this case, right, it's, you know, the, the fact that these are kind of like blobs, the maybe the shading as well, the edges, the shadows, all of that is being taken in. And yeah, you'll see that if I increase this more and more, the more my bubbles kind of become, well, bubbles. Now, the issue with this, though, is that Canny can't really tell whether this is like a floating blob or this is a shadow. So what you end up getting as an output is you get these uh, bubbles in the air, but then you also get these bubbles on the floor, which, you know, might not make too much sense if you're dealing with um, trying to get like a accurate, you know, like example of like floating bubbles. Um, yeah. Now let's go into depth. Well, depth is kind of, um, well, it's a 3D map, right? So you can think of it as uh, this one right here, where it's taking the spatial data, it's estimating the spatial data and using that to help the output. Now, in this case, you'll see that, well, as I increase my depth, my circles, my bubbles kind of appear more and we don't get those floor bubbles as much anymore because the depth map is estimating, okay, these are kind of floating in the air in 3D space, but the shadows are, you know, they're still 2D. Um, but yeah. Now, you know, if you were running this locally, you would only be able to use um, one of these control nodes. So, you know, we can also try HED. And well, what does HED do? Well, if we go on to our website here, you'll see that, well, HED is almost kind of the same as canny, but it's only for soft edges. And so what does that mean? Well, that means like more of the, it gets compared to canny, it gets less of the finer details, right? So this is great if you're trying to look for the edges of an image or your input, but you want to avoid all of the noise that might come along with it. Um, but yeah. And so, you know, again, it does a decent job of making bubbles, but you still get this like weird, like floor, these floor bubbles, right? And so, yeah. The last one that we can try that um, Daydream offers is open pose. And open pose is, well, if we go into our website one more time, it is for uh, like human poses, basically. And so as we increase open pose, it's actually not going to do anything because it there's no human there. So what Daydream offers is a lot more customizability through multi-control nets. You can play around with what feels right with you in terms of um, what a good control net is and really feel for a sense of like, Oh, of good adherence, of making sure that your input and your output match uh, in a meaningful way, rather than just, you know, hoping for the best that, you know, by chance, the single control net will be able to make sure that the output looks similar to the input. 
And on top of that, you know, this is just the control nets. You can also go back into the step schedule and play around with that as well. Um, for example, when I just increase this by a little bit, my output drastically changes um, in style. And yet, you know, there's no like weird floor bubbles. It's still kind of like it, it's able to tell between, you know, what is um, a bubble and what is a drop shadow, which I think is really great. And it's something that you might not just be able to get if you were to just try to do it with a single control net. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was a uh, given you a bit more insight on what control nets can do and how you can be more intentional if you understand which characteristics the control nets are pulling from your input. And if you ever, you know, get lost, this website is a great resource where you can check out most control nets. Um, and yeah, really just test it out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.